What's going on, everybody? We're back with another giant Halloween pumpkin pail update. Woo. Oh my gosh, these are looking so, so good. Look at that face. <laughs> he's angry that he's not finished with a bucket handle and top. <laughs> Gina, these are looking amazing. You're doing such a really, really good job. Well, I have to tell you, you did such a good job making these smooth for our time crunch because I know you're sitting there going, oh know, my they're, gosh. They're not perfect. There's definitely some areas we can go back and fill them with some drywall mud and fix it. But, you know, in the dark, you probably won't notice. So I'll have to just stop obsessing. But uh, I may still sneak out and do a little fix when Gina's not looking. No, you're not going to do that because I've been painting these and painting them and painting them. Speaking of painting, yeah. I want to give Dave at Home Depot, our local Home Depot, a huge shout out only because I took my little fan deck there and those are what you, you know, pick all the colors from. Yeah. And he had like seven extra ones for me to look through. So I really got to match the color to the bucket. So thank you, Dave. If you're watching this, huge shout out. Thank yeah. you, Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, Dave, very much. Plus, it was fun visiting about uh, Halloween. He does a little display himself at his home. So we got to talk about that. And that was fun. Since the last update that some of you may have saw, we got uh, to the point where we had just finished carving the bottom sections and all the wood 
uh, finished. Uh, since then, what we've done is we covered the foam areas with tinfoil using a spray adhesive, and then we went over with a layer of fiberglass, and then we sanded and added Bondo. We also did some fiberglass strips over all of our wood seams to help kind of smooth things over. Then Gina primed and painted several times <laughs> on all these. These colors with the tints in them, they don't cover like the white does. So on the handles, we have basically cut some pieces of the thin uh, underlayment and then we fiberglass one side. We added some of the decorative tabs. We've got the peg with the insert nut inside there. And the idea is we're going to drill from the inside, put a bolt from the inside, the screws on each side. These actually look pretty accurate with the exception of these just being thinner. So I was like, man, Chris, he had the strip and then he was putting that little extra tab on the side. I said, oh, all those little details you always love to do. I'm highly impressed. Thanks, honey. And this is so much fun too. Like, so I think that the fiberglass is gonna add a little extra strength. I don't wanna snap this in front of you guys because we still have to fiberglass the other side, <laughs> but I think it's gonna work out pretty good. Once I reinforce these pegs so that they don't break, then we have some black gel coat that's left over from uh, doing the weight prop that we worked on. So that's gonna be perfect because it'll even be black. The other thing that we did since the last video is we added these little holders for the, the, the handles that I just showed you. And by doing that, I just made one template and then replicated it and then shot it onto some plywood. I tried to make it look as authentic as possible. We can't pop our handles in like the plastic ones. Um, but that's a good thing because yeah. half of mine are broken. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They weren't meant to last 30 years, yeah. that's for sure. No, and it's funny, once we started building the handles, I was like, oh no, the handles are different depending on which year it is because some of them have more reinforcements and stuff. So I'm still going with the original 80s version or the whatever the first batch was, I believe. So um, I'm also not adding the second tab in there, but it's not a big deal because you won't see it. And again, we're just going to drill a hole and run a bolt through there. So for the ghost, we were going to paint like a, a glowing paint or some kind of maybe fire wildfire. wildfire paint on there to make it glow in black light or whatever. On the witch pumpkin pail, we're going to have lots of detail because she has all the hair and spider and stuff. So for the McGoblin, we thought, you know what? Gina was like, hey, let's paint the writing on the back. So to do that, as well as the faces, we're just putting tape down first and then using our projector. It's not going to be perfect, but you know, we're just doing it by hand and then cutting it out with a razor blade, giving her a stencil, and then she can carefully roll it with black. And I think it looks pretty good. She is going back with a little tiny paintbrush and touching up any of the little boo-boos that we got, but I think it's gonna be great, right? Yeah, and for anyone who is doing like a highly detailed line like this, always first go back in with your base color before you put the black or whatever yeah. color on top because it kind of creates a barrier and it won't bleed and that really, really helps. And also pushing down the tape as much as you can. And I mean, I, we just found our center line and then we kind of measured, you know, going down however we, however much we wanted to and and uh you know like i said it's not perfect there is a little bit of warpage from the curve of the of the pumpkin which drives me nuts but you know that's a lot faster than finding font forever and then <laughs> printing out a stencil and that kind of thing so so we're going to keep moving forward with getting the, all these faces and details painted and then once gina's finished with that we're going to clear coat this stuff so it uh lasts a little bit longer in the weather we may paint the inside, we still haven't done that. And then we may run out of time to where we don't have time to do all the lids. If we do, or are able to do one lid, should we do the witch one? We're not really sure. I say we do the witch one because it's the different one. Yeah. And then um, I know she's got a lot of detail on her already, but I was thinking you could put candy in the ghost yep. and then do the UV black light to it or whatever we're gonna do. And then people could take pictures in the McGoblin. Yeah, and that's what kind of Gina and I were thinking is we we're like, you know, if we, people may want to get inside this thing to take a little fun pick or something. So, you know, plus, you know, we got to start working on Harrison's costume. 
So there's a lot of other things that we got to try to bang out before Halloween gets here. So we may not do the lids, but oh man, maybe we'll try. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know something's going down here. We're going to be getting our buckets, our little buckets, and then we'll move on with the project. We won't even want to do these anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's too bad we didn't have like a... Uh, not a shrink ray, but a growing ray, you right. know? <laughs> All right, you guys. Are you going to get a Happy Meal? Yeah, I know I am. We are. We're super excited for Harrison to get out of school so we can go drive there and, and see what color we get, right? Yes, yeah, some people are already getting them early. They've Lucky already been getting does. them. Yeah, Lucky we're getting seen all kinds of picture posting. So, but you don't have some big ones, so <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> neener, neener, boo, boo. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you guys think and which one's going to be your favorite.